The importance of electronics in our lives cannot be understated. From the devices you watch this video on, to self-driving cars, artificial intelligence, and even robots on Mars, all of them in the core rely on digital information processing using semiconductor microchips. In this video, I will describe how Spintronics can be the next step in the evolution of electronic. My name is Dmitry Khakhrikov. I am a doctoral student at Chalmers University of Technology, and Spintronics is the topic of my PhD thesis. I always was fascinated by how much the electronics has evolved over the last 50 years. First computers in 1960s were the size of the room, whereas now in our pockets we carry smartphones that are smaller, yet also millions of times more powerful than those big old computers. This makes it quite interesting to think how electronics will improve in the next few decades. And to answer this, we should look back at how electronics has so strongly progressed over the last 50 years. The main driving forces for this were the development of transistor technology and the progress in semiconductor micro and nano fabrication. A transistor is an electronic switch that is a basic building block in processors, microcontrollers, and basically all electronics. It is a switch because it has two states. It can conduct electricity between the two sides of the device, which are called source and drain, if there is voltage applied to the gate electrode, and it does not conduct if there is no voltage. These two states basically represent the zero and one binary states in the digital computing. For many decades, the improvement in electronics was a result of scaling down the transistor dimensions. This allowed to fit more transistors in the chip area, which led to increased performance. Uh, however, nowadays, these transistors become so small that it gets harder and harder to continue shrinking. Therefore, we need to find other ways to improve the computing power of integrated circuits. And Spintronics can be a solution. So, normal electronics uses the electric charge of electrons for computing. But electrons also have a quantum property of spin, which describes their magnetic properties. Simply put, one can imagine electrons as tiny magnets. All electrons can have only two values of spin, uh, we call them spin up and spin down, which can uh, be used as a new way to represent zeros and ones. This way, Spintronics aims to use the electron spins for information technology. This approach can offer two main advantages. First is that changing the spin of an electron takes less energy than moving electric charges through a device which means that spin-based devices can operate at lower power. If such technology could be used in mobile phones, they would need to be charged less often. Uh, the second is that the electron spin in magnetic materials can be used to realize computer memory that does not lose information when the power is cut off. So using electron spin for both logic and memory can lead to more integrated and more efficient devices. Actually, spin-based computer memory is already quite widespread. For example, hard disk drives store information in the orientation of spins in a magnetic layer, and they read it uh, using the spintronic effect called giant magnetoresistance. The use of this effect allowed to greatly increase the information storage density and gave a strong boost to the development of electronics and spintronics. For this, the Nobel Prize in 2007 was awarded. Uh, now, the research is focused on finding the ways to use these magnetic properties, not only for storing the information, but also for doing logic operations and calculations. And while common materials like silicon can be used for spintronics, the recently discovered two-dimensional materials were found to be more efficient for this. Two-dimensional materials are also called layered materials because they consist of individual layers that are weakly connected to each other. This means that these single layers can be peeled away from a big piece of material and studied separately. An example of such a layered material is graphite, which is used as a writing material in common pencils. 
a single isolated layer of graphite is called graphene, and it looks like this. It is made of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice. This was the first 2D material obtained and studied experimentally. It turned out that it has many unusual properties. For example, it is mechanically stronger than steel, conducts electricity better than copper, and it is optically nearly transparent. For the experimental discovery of this material, Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded in 2010. Graphene was also found to be very promising for spintronics, because one of the most important material properties for spintronics is called spin lifetime, which basically tells you once you set the spins along a certain direction, how much time it takes for those spins to go back to the random state. It was found that in graphene, that spin lifetime is larger than in previously studied materials. In my thesis, I studied the spin transport properties of graphene. Uh, we do this by creating a non-equilibrium spin polarization, that is, we create more electrons with, say, spin up than spin down, and study how this spin density can be transported in graphene and how it relaxes to the normal state. I studied how the spin density interacts with common graphene defects, such as uh, folds and multilayer patches, and I found that the spin transport is robust and not very sensitive to such defects, which is good news when you want to make devices on a large scale. I have also made more complicated circuits of graphene and studied spin transport in them. I found that the spin density can be detected at a distance of 34 micrometers away from the injector, which was the longest distance achieved at the time of publication. And I further made first attempts at realizing spintronic logic gates, such as a spin majority gate. These studies prove that the graphene is a great choice for spin transport material, and it is a promising building block for future spintronic logic circuits. Uh, however, while graphene is good for spin transport, it does not have a possibility of spin manipulation, which is necessary for realizing active spintronic devices like spin transistors. For this, a property that is called high spin orbit coupling is needed. And since it is absent in graphene, we need to introduce other materials that have it. For this, we can use a very important property of 2D materials. That is, that different layers can be easily stacked on top of each other to form heterostructures in which some properties of individual materials can be shared between the neighboring layers. That is called the proximity effect. In my project for this, I use topological insulators, which are a recently discovered new class of material. Their interesting property is that they can conduct electricity on the surface, but not in the bulk. For a theoretical discovery of such topologically non-trivial phases of matter, a Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded in 2016. As these materials have the needed high spin orbit coupling and they're also layered, we want to combine topological insulators and graphene in one device to get both the good spin transport that comes from graphene and the possibility of spin manipulation due to the spin orbit coupling that comes from the topological insulator. For my research, I made such hybrid devices and studied their properties. I found that the spin orbit coupling in graphene gets increased by 10 times when a topological insulator is placed on top of it. My experiments showed that this does not reduce the quality of spin transport too much, but it adds new functionality into the graphene. In particular, I found that in such heterostructures, graphene can develop a spin galvanic effect which means that it can convert charge current into spin current and vice versa. This is a very interesting discovery since it adds a new method that can be used in the future spintronic devices to create or detect spin polarization. And its big advantage is that it is strongly tunable by the gate electric field, unlike the conventional methods. To summarize, my research is in the field of spintronics, which aims to find innovative solutions for next generation electronics using electron spin to achieve more energy efficient computing devices. And I study the spintronic properties of two dimensional layered materials. 
In particular, in my project, I work with graphene and topological insulators. And I found that when these two materials are brought together, graphene becomes capable of spin charge conversion, which is an important component for the future development of spintronics.